Good evening and welcome to Falcon Update live on MC77. I'm Charmaine Lin. And I'm Jojo King. Men's and women's swimming face the Dickinson Red Devils in a non-conference match in Carlisle on Tuesday. After starting the duel with second and fourth place finishes in the 200 medley relay, the men continued their momentum with second and third place finishes in the 200 free from Daniel Logan and Tyler Wilkinson, finishing respectively. Wilkinson added a second place finish in the 100 free later in the meet to contribute to the Falcons' efforts. Andrew Leifer also had a strong showing in the 50 free, taking second with David Welch close behind in third. Rich Hagar contributed a third place finish in the 100 back to help the Falcons along, but it wasn't enough. The men ultimately felt Dickinson 144 to 58. On the women's side, a victory in the 200 medley relay from the team of Kaylee Hollenbach, Nicia McCobb, Casey Cotton and Emily Decker started the evening off. The Falcons ultimately took first in five of the 11 events of the day. Maylin Elder contributed a first place finish in the 100 IM, and Cassie Cotton claimed the 100 free. Later on, Kaylee Hollenbach took first in the 100 back by a margin of nearly three seconds. The Falcons capped off a duel with a victory in the 200 free relay from a team of Hollenbach, Decker, Brittany Pond, and Cotton. But in the end, the Falcons fell just short of the Red Devils with a final score of 109 to 96. Men's and women's swimming would be back in action on Saturday and Sunday at the Lee, uh, Washington and Lee Invitational in Lexington, Virginia. On Saturday, the men turned in a solid performance that had them sitting at third place going into day two. The Falcons earned a fourth and fifth place finish in the 400 medley relay and 200 free relay, respectively. Along with their success in the relays, Daniel Logan and Ridge Hagar added top five finishes in their individual events. Logan led the Falcons in the 500 free, finishing in third. Hagar gave Messiah another top five finish in the 200 IM, taking fifth. On Sunday morning, Curtis Platiel and Daniel Logan contributed two second place finishes in the 100 back and the 200 free, respectively, to help hold the Falcons at third place. On Sunday evening, Tyler Wilkinson highlighted the Falcons' efforts with a second place finish in the 200 back. The men finished the Invitational in third place with 674 team points, behind first place Washington and Lee and second place York. The women also started out the Invitational with a strong showing on Saturday. The Falcons earned two top five finishes in the two relay events and three Falcons placed in the top three in their individual events. Cassie Cotton tied with Washington and Lee's Claudia Barnett for the first place in for 50 free, and Kaylee Hollenbach followed less than a tenth of a second behind them to take third. Nancy Ziegler added another top three finish, placing second in the 500 free. On Sunday morning, Kaylee Hollenbach's first place finish in the 100 back pushed the women to second place. Allie, also, Allie Sell also helped the Falcons' efforts with a second place finish in the 100 breast, beating the program record for Messiah by almost two seconds. The Falcons would collect a total of 775 points to take second behind Washington and Lee's generals with 1,143.5. Men's and women's swimming will, be, will take a break for finals and will be back on Christmas in the pool on January 12th against Arcadia University. Are you interested in rec sports? We have reporter Matt Nabb to answer your questions about getting involved. I am Matt Nabb reporting here from Sawyer Gymnasium. And behind me you can see rec basketball starting to take place. People are warming up for their playoff matches tonight. I'm here with Luke, who is a sophomore. Um, Luke, what would you say about rec basketball? Um, why did you choose to play? You know, I played in high school, so it's a, it's a nice transition into college where I can still focus on my schoolwork and still have that competitive feeling to play in basketball. What about it for students just works out well? Um, at the collegiate level, there's sports, then there's rec here where students of um, in any class can come and play. So what would you say to students who aren't involved in rec sports? It's a great time. You should come out and play. It gives you a nice relief from uh, your schoolwork, and uh, we definitely love to come see you guys play. I am here with Ben, who runs a majority of rec sports here. And Ben, you used to tell, tell us a little bit of what you do. Yeah, so I am the head ref for rec sports. I am in charge of uh, doing all the scheduling for the refs, all the background uh, scheduling for the teams, um, making the leagues on I am leagues, and um, basically organize and run everything that the refs do. What can you say to students who are looking to get involved in rec sports? Um, it's a lot of fun. A lot of teams just get together with their friends. Uh, 
the more competitive sports, we have two different leagues, a really competitive league and a less competitive league. So if you want to uh, play rec sports, but you want to just do it for fun, then we have that for you. Um, we also have leagues uh, for people who want it to be really competitive as well. I am here with Alex Desenti, who is a referee for rec basketball. Um, Alex, what would you say is a big part of rec basketball and the relationship it has with the students here at Messiah? I would uh, say that rec basketball is just a great environment for anybody from uh, any year to be able just to come over and just play uh, the sport that they like to play. It's really cool to just go ahead and see uh, like a lot of people who don't play for the school to come out and just want to play for fun. Basketball is just one of many rec sports that take place here on Messiah's campus. For students who are looking to get involved, please visit the website imleagues.com. For MC77, I'm Matt Nabb. Thank you, Matt. We will have more Falcon Update when we get back. Stay tuned. TheGoMessiah.com, the official website of Messiah College Athletics. On the homepage, you can find recent stories, a social media directory including general athletics and sports-specific accounts, and the Falcon YouTube stream. Scrolling down, you can view upcoming events with stats, audio, and video links if available, as well as recent results, including box scores and recaps. In those recaps, you can read the story along with view the photo gallery, next game information, team schedule, and roster. Game stats are on the side, and you can even watch the highlight of the night. These highlights were made possible by GoMessiah.tv, where you can view live streams and stats for all home games, regardless of where you are. GoMessiah.com. Your home for everything Falcon. At the Learning Center, we provide a free service for all Messiah students to come and get a little extra help. Um, you can sign up for a Learning Center appointment on the MC Square homepage through the Learning Center quick link. What you want to do is you want to just click that link and it will prompt you to pick a subject and a time. Um, we're open from 3 to 10 p.m. So any time period in those hours you can pick. Um, you can sign up for a half hour or for an hour time slot and then it will work with you to find a tutor that best fits your needs. Hi, I'm Sarah. Are you here for your learning center appointment? Yeah. I'm Joan Southerton. I'm director of the Learning Center. And um, we have 20 very capable tutors who are not only um, knowledgeable in their subject area, but very capable in, in communicating that information to students that might need a little extra help. My name is Joy Endicott and I've been to the Learning Center a couple of times for various subjects in health and it's just been a really great experience and it's a really great resource for students. I know a couple times that I've been, my professor noticed that I had come and that my skills had improved and they were really happy about that and they gave me um, a couple like extra points on a test or they like commended me for doing so. The number of students that I tutor varies um, depending on the week. I'm here for three hours a week and people can sign up for either a half an hour or an hour slot. I've been to the Learning Center for Chinese tutoring over the past year and I think it, it was a really cool experience because you know they went at my pace um, and it's really good to get another opinion on something other than just the professor. A student that's been through it kind of teaching you through everything is definitely a better experience than just trying to you know suffer through it yourself.
The Messiah wrestling team sat comfortably in second place after the first day of the Messiah Petrov's Invitational on Friday. The Falcons had a total of 12 wrestlers still alive in the tournament to compete on Saturday. After Friday, six Falcons had earned spots in the semifinals with Sean Reddington, jo Josiah Gare, Stephen Maloney, Dan Swar, Victor de France, and Brian Shermeyer, all remaining undefeated through day one. On Saturday, the final day of the Invitational, Josiah Gare, Stephen Maloney, and Victor de France all earned individual titles in their weight classes. Sean Reddington, Nick Nunez, Dan Swar, and Brian Shermeyer all finished in the top four. Overall, Messiah earned second place in the Invitational with 158 points, ahead of Muhlenberg with 116 points, point five, but behind Mount Union with 218. Wrestling will be back on the mats at home on Friday when they host the Gettysburg Bullets. Track and field opened their season at the Diplomat Open, hosted by Franklin and Marshall. Brendan Proven and Andrew Schott highlighted the Falcons' performance, both notching their names in the program top 10 list. Proven started things off by taking 13th in the 60-meter dash. His time of 7.27 seconds puts him at 5th in the all-time top 10 list for the Falcons. Andrew Schott earned his 10th place spot in the top 10 list with a time of 9.40 seconds in the 60-meter hurdles. Also notable for the Falcons was Tyler McPheeters, leading the charge in the mile and taking first with a time of 4.27.46. Benjamin Schott also led the Falcons in their 3,000-meter run, taking fourth with a time of 8.45.69. Caleb Krishner also helped the Falcons along with a second-place finish in the pole vault, jumping 4.1 meters. This was a non-team scoring event, so no overall places were given. On the women's side, the Falcons put up a strong showing with several athletes earning spots on the program's top 10 list. Catherine Wiederecht earned her spot in the top 10 with a time of 8.31 seconds in the 60-meter dash. In the 3,000-meter run, Sarah Codd and Madison Landis found themselves with top 10 spots, finishing in 4th and 6th place, respectively. Later, the 4x400-meter four, four relay team of Kelsey Kennedy, Leanne Weaver, Rebecca Crosley, and Taylor Wiederecht placed first with a time of 4.07.55, the second fastest time in program history. Although they did not receive top 10 spots for their performances, Leanne Weaver contributed a first place finish in the 3,000 meter run and Taylor Wiederecht added another with a victory in the high jump. The Falcons will take a break for Christmas and finals but will return to the track on January 19th when they travel to Susquehanna University. Are you curious as to where your food goes once you're finished? Kyle Wickenheiser goes behind the scenes into food waste at Lottie. Lottie Nelson Dining Hall. It's the place where Messiah students get most of their food. It's where plenty of friendships are formed, and it's where you probably find yourself on open house days. But have you ever thought about what goes on behind the scenes? Most of the time it's for an average of 800 students. So that can be 150 pounds of potatoes and about 120 pounds of meat. And that's just for one line. Of all the food made during prep, how much of that actually gets used? And what happens to the food that doesn't? I have been told at various times that it like gets either like ground up or mulched or something. I'm not really sure. What the food over on the accumulator system right here, once it comes back, the uneaten food, we take it, we dump it in a trough, that gets put in a machine, that'll grind it up, and we use that uh, for fertilizer. Even with all the food students do take, there are always leftovers. So how does Lottie handle all the extra food? Uh, the food that we cook that is not ever touched by anyone, that goes to a food recovery program, which is donated to charity um, in the local Harrisburg market. Even with a conscious effort to donate food, Lottie, just like many other college eateries, throws out their fair share of food. A lot of the food here we just throw directly in the trash if it's not used. Pans, whole pans of it just get dumped in the trash, thrown in the dumpster. How big of a problem is food waste? According to the Food Recovery Network, U.S. colleges throw out over 22 million pounds of food per year, which amounts to over $30 million lost. So what can students do to help waste less food? We have a lot of options, so if you want to try something, go for it. But maybe just be careful about how much you take so that it doesn't get wasted. A lot is a take-all-you-want, eat-all-you-take kind of restaurant. I don't, you know, really doesn't matter how much you take as long as you're eating everything on your plate. A few steps in helping to reduce the waste at Lottie are one, take less food. 
only take the amount of food that you know that you can eat. Secondly, if you do have any un uneaten food, make sure that you put it on the accumulator in order for it to be composted. Don't throw it in the trash. And lastly, inform your friends. The more people who know, the more that we can do. For MC77, I'm Kyle Wickenheiser. Thank you, Kyle. We have a new segment here on Falcon Update called Falcon on the Street, where we ask random Messiah students questions on the spot. Take a look. We are on our way to ask Messiah students what TV or movie moments from their childhood scarred them the most. Let's go. One of the Rugrats movies where they sing like a really inappropriate song about poop. So the first time I watched it, I was like, oh, this is a fun song. Then the second time I watched it, I was like, maybe like, 15 and I was like wow this is really awkward. I watched Rocky Horror Picture Show at far too young of an age. That wasn't necessarily a childhood movie nor is that for children but I watched that as a child. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Finish and Ferb. It's like Perry the Platypus. It's just scary. I can never trust animals ever again. Mickey Mouse because it's a mouse that talks and I was terrified as a little kid of just having a mouse suddenly come into my room and start talking to me. It's Courage the Cowardly Dog. That show was the scariest thing I've ever seen and I hope never to watch it again. So in the movie Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, when the child catcher comes out and says, lollipops all free today, that really scared me because he's a terrifying looking man and I had a lot of nightmares about the child catcher coming for me for a lot of years. There was a commercial for Cats the Musical and that has scarred me ever since. So that was terrifying because like, you know, there's just like their facial expressions and like the makeup and no. Um, probably Coraline. Have you ever seen Coraline with the, like the sewing, the buttons on the eyes? That's just creepy. <laughs> well, I never really liked That's So Great and like those flashback things, you know? They were kind of weird. I would have to say the kidnapper from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang when he yes. was lollipops and ice cream. Scarred for years, terrified. The Ghost of Mr. Chicken, and my sister and I watched it together, and it seriously is not even a scary movie, but they had one of those player pianos that like would play by itself, and so my sister and I had to sleep together like in her twin bed for like a week. Like We couldn't sleep, it was awful. What moment scared you the most as a child? I'll log on to our social media pages and leave a comment. Back to you guys. We will have Shay Quinton, Micah Fitz, and Johnny Grunhoff with us to talk about the men's soccer season here on Falcon Update after the break. Stay tuned. Yep, I know. regarding career and vocation. So if you're an incoming student and you're saying, I don't know what I should major in, or I've picked a major and I don't know what I should do with that major, we are a great place to come because we offer one-on-one -on -one counseling for students. There are six career coaches in our office that meet every day with lots of appointments to help you with your questions about a career and, and jobs and internships, so we do one-on-one -on -one counseling. If you've never built a resume, we can help you with that and correct that. If you've never done a practice interview, we do those. If you would like to meet with professionals in the field, we help you with that. Into the City is where each semester we take a trip to a major metropolitan area and take students with us. And we go with the sole purpose of helping students experience businesses and places of work in a large urban area. We've been to New York City, Boston. Currently, we're leaving for Chicago. Um, 
Baltimore, Nashville, Charlotte. So all the major cities we have been trying to get to and we take students with us so that they can find out what it's like to live in the city and work there. I really enjoyed my time going to Nashville because it was a really great opportunity to really uh, understand what networking is, just being able to see, wow, you know, from Messiah that I could go and work in some of these big companies and small companies. Don't wait too long to go to the Career Center. They're here every day to want to help you. Um, I know that really benefited me going there first year to be able to talk through my major change, um, what exactly a resume was, things to not say in an interview, um, a lot of different skills that were really beneficial to help me get a leg up even from a first year student. I know sometimes you think, oh, I don't need to start thinking about this till sophomore, junior year, but there's a lot of resources they have that can really help you get a step ahead. Welcome back to Falcon Update. I'm joined by Shay Quinton, Micah Fitz, and Johnny Grutkoff to talk about their soccer journey and the successful men's soccer season. How are you guys doing? Great, thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for having us. So how did each of you begin playing soccer? Um, I started when I was five years old. I played a lot of sports growing up and then soccer just seemed to be the one that stuck. So middle school, high school is when I started to get more serious and then I guess all the other sports dropped to the side and that was the one I focused on and picked up playing college? Yeah, same thing with me. Uh, started off playing soccer, basketball, probably five or six. Just played in a lot of different leagues and liked soccer a lot. It's too small for basketball, otherwise I'd probably like basketball more. Yeah, I played soccer, basketball, roller hockey. Um, and basketball, I was kind of too short. So I was like, roller hockey or soccer? And like, soccer was like the only one that had organized leagues, so I kind of just stuck with that. And how did all of you end up here at Messiah? Why did you pick Messiah? Um, soccer obviously played a big part, I think, for all of us. Um, we were all on the same team at an ID camp that um, Messiah hosted. And so for me, um, one thing led to another. I guess coach gave me an offer and I came on my visit. And I think the thing that really st stood out to me um, on my visit was just how um, relationally invested the guys on the team were here. Um, so when I experienced that, it was a little different from all the other colleges I visited. And um, I saw the size of a place I could grow in my faith, and the guys around me would encourage me in my faith, and so um, I guess all those things together led me to pick Messiah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how to follow that. That was, <laughs> that was well said, Johnny. Um, I Same thing with me. We were on the same ID camp team, so we, I went to a camp once, loved it, met the guys, uh, just had a really good time. Just to piggyback off what Johnny said, um, it's just that I think it's the group of guys on the soccer team that just made it that much better. Like, uh, if it's just soccer, it's, I mean, that's, that's not it at all. I think the best memories that I've had here and, you know, what drew me here was more the relationships with the guys and how I saw them interacting with each other. Yeah, that's just an unbelievable answer. I don't really know how I'm going to follow that. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> just to piggyback off that, I'd say, um, yeah, I, I came to an ID camp. I was on these guys' team. Um, we got along really well. The players I interacted with on the team already were like bros. So I don't know, that was a big drawing. And then faith, I think, was huge for me. But the relationships I've built here have become like so much more than just like playing soccer. It's like deep mm -hmm. personal relationships that I'll have like beyond my college experience. Mm -hmm. So what is the ID camp then? Johnny. Johnny, yeah. Uh, <laughs> So every summer, um, the soccer program puts on, and other sports do it too, they put on camps um, for everybody from kids to high schoolers. And so um, in June, there's a camp that our program puts on for rising juniors and seniors in high school um, who are interested in playing here. And then kind of from there is where they identify a lot of the, the recruits who they then make offers to. And Johnny, your younger brother actually plays on the team mm -hmm. too. So what's that like? Um, so we got to play together two years in high school um, and so it's been awesome to uh, have him in this program and this program has changed me um, for sure and I'm excited to see how it's going to impact him. Um, I think Masai is unique in a lot of ways um, and it's been fun just to get to share the field uh, with him and see um, him grow and connect um, with guys in his class and guys on the team 
Um, there are lots of sets of brothers who have come through the Messiah program, um, so it's cool to, uh, I guess, be added to that number. So there's a lot of love on the team. So who would you say is the best dressed oh. on the team? It's, it's got to be Britt, right? Yeah, <laughs> by far. <laughs> yeah, Britt's in a Hazel team. Uh, he's just, I don't know, he's got a great sense of style. He, he loves colorful shoes. Like, he's got these trademark red shoes. I would say he's, yeah. yeah. Maybe he's an easy thing. Yeah, I would say Britt is able say to so. see celebrities on TV and replicate <laughs> that exact <laughs> outfit perfectly in his own sense of style. Um, do you guys ever have game nights with the team or anything? Board games? Mm. Johnny? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we d we spend a lot of time together, obviously in season, but out s out of season too. Um, I think one of the things that we all kind of talked about that set Messiah apart for us was how relationally invested the guys on the team were, um, and that's not an accident. That's really intentional. Um, so yeah, we we do everything together. Uh, we live together, game nights, whatever. Who's the most competitive? Uh, <laughs> Connor Bell, senior goalkeeper. Yeah. Like He's a great cornhole player, but sometimes it goes over the top. All right, well, that's all the time we have tonight. Uh, thank you for coming on the show. And stay tuned for Campus Calendar coming up next. I have really found a significant amount of faculty interaction, and I felt that at the chemistry department at Messiah, that they have just been really invested in my education, and they've cared about who I am as a person. We have resources available to us that are similar to those that you might find at a bigger research university and I think that one of the most crucial developmental aspects of my relationship to God as a result of my education is that I'm learning to appraise the difference between um, the scriptural truth that we are taught growing up as Christians and the things that uh, maybe require more critical thinking and learning to uh, learn more about who God is by our study of the natural world and how we can study that and just grow closer to him. Welcome back to MC77. I'm Molly Sherman giving you this week's campus calendar. First up, still need to do some Christmas shopping? Then come shop unique and fair trade Christmas gifts at the 10,000 Villages Holiday Sale from Tuesday, December 4th to Thursday, December 6th. 10,000 Villages will be set up outside the Falcon from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. all three days. Funds from the holiday sale will benefit the collaboratory. Combo Chimbita is coming to B-Sides this Wednesday. This Colombian band from New York has a distinctly futuristic yet traditional sound with roots in heavy rock, metal, funk, and soul. Catch the Mini Union at 9 p.m. on Wednesday. This semester's Digital Media Senior Seminar class will present Control, Shift, Return, an interactive gallery on Friday, December 7th at 7.30 p.m. in Fry Lobby. Come explore how we can return back to the world with a sense of wonder and support your friends in the Digital Media Department as well. The SAB Lost Film of the Week is Eighth Grade. Written and directed by Bo Burnham, Eighth Grade follows an introverted teenage girl just trying to survive the last week of her eighth grade year before starting high school. The movie will show on Friday at 6 and 9 p.m. and Saturday at 3, 6 and 9 p.m. Tickets are free for students and faculty and $4 for guests. This Friday and Saturday, come support the students of the Department of Theater and Dance as they showcase their original work in their fall senior series. Two pieces will be featured this weekend. One created and performed by Kelly Hertzler and Amanda Adams, and one created and performed by Becca Roberts. The two pieces will be performed on Friday, December 7th at 8 p.m. and Saturday, December 8th at 3 and 8 p.m. in the Grace Pollock Dance Studio in Kleinenhaga. Tickets for this event will be $5 for all attendees. Don't forget to assemble your team for the IS Dodgeball Tournament on Saturday at 1 p.m. in Sawyer Gym. This year, instead of the classes facing off, students are free to form their own teams. The cost is $2 per person to play, and all the funds will go to the Cracked Pot Coffee Shop to help with their foster care rehabilitation. Most importantly, the winning team will receive a free t-shirt, so don't miss out. Do you enjoy music and free entertainment? Then come hear the Messiah College Guitar Ensemble, conducted by Randy Zwally, as they perform in their winter concert on Saturday, December 8th. The concert will take place at 1.30 p.m. in the High Center Recital Hall. As mentioned, tickets are free for this event, so why not go and support this Messiah College Ensemble? It's a weekend full of concerts at Messiah. The Messiah College Jazz Combo, directed by Todd Gorenson, will perform at 7.30 p.m. on Saturday, December 8th in the High Center Recital Hall. This concert is also free and open to the public. 
Also on Saturday, Acclamation Dance Ministry will present their 2018 Winter Worship Concert Inseparable. You have two opportunities to catch the concert. Saturday at 3.30 with doors opening at 3 and Saturday at 7.30, doors opening at 7. The concert will take place at Camp Hill United Methodist Church. Tickets are $5 for individuals age 5 and up and free for children under 5. That's all for this week's Campus Calendar. Thank you, Molly. That's all for this week's show. Be sure to tune in next week for our last show before winter break and MC Live coming up next. For JoJo King, Lily Kashishian, and Molly Sherman, I'm Charmaine Lim. Have a great night. Grantham Community Garden. We grow over 40 different crops here, all grown organically, all by students, always student-led. We're one of the most profitable student organizations on campus. Everything that we grow here we sell and that keeps the garden going and also pays the people who work in it. And now we're trying to work our way towards being a small farm. We have um, more paid student workers than we've ever had before. Acclamation Dance Ministry is a club on campus that basically incorporates any number of people to come and learn about dance as a form of worship. Acclamation offers a lot of classes. We offer three levels of modern, three levels of jazz, three levels of ballet, and a point class, and two levels of tap. Anyone can be involved in Acclamation. We want our doors to be open and arms to be welcoming in for people if they want to learn dance and learn that through a means of worship. We are a student-run organization. All of our officers are students on campus. All of our teachers are students on campus. And we are a ministry, first and foremost. I think one of my favorite parts of Acclamation is just being able to put homework down, just being able to go to the dance studio and have a good time with friends and worship God. It's definitely been a constant in my life and a constant in my time at Messiah. I also really love the community. Um, I love that it really is a family. It's a community of people that are encouraging and lifting me up in my dance ability, not tearing me down. I came to college where dance had always been something that really separated me from God. And so coming to Acclamation, I found people that dance with me and encourage my faith. And also just a way to worship God that I hadn't really experienced before. And honestly, now it's my most true form of worship. For me to use dance as a form of worship is to kind of give my body as a living sacrifice. To give back to God what he's given to us. So just to use our talents and abilities um, for his glory. For me, it means to just use movement in all that you are. I'm an acclamation, we say audience for one, you're dancing for God, and that's what praising God through dance is. It's me recognizing that this gift is not my own and it's something that I want to give the Lord and also share with others that this isn't my own ability, but it's God's. So people who want to join acclamation, join. I've seen many people who have tried it for the first time and just absolutely love it, so just give it a try. And it's just a place to come have fun, really, and learn how to glorify God in a new way. And it's, if you've never danced for God before, it's a really cool way to praise Him. At the Learning Center, we provide a free service for all Messiah students to come and get a little extra help. 
Um, you can sign up for a Learning Center appointment on the MC Square homepage through the Learning Center Quick Link. What you want to do is you want to just click that link and it will prompt you to pick a subject and a time. Um, we're open from 3 to 10 p.m. So any time period in those hours you can pick. Um, you can sign up for a half hour or for an hour time slot and then it will work with you to find a tutor that best fits your needs. Sorry, are you here for your learning center? Yeah. I'm Joan Southerton. I'm director of the Learning Center. And um, we have 20 very capable tutors who are not only um, knowledgeable in their subject area, but very capable in, in communicating that information to students that might need a little less extra help. My name is Joy Endicott, and I've been to the Learning Center a couple of times for various subjects in health and it's just been a really great experience and it's a really great resource for students. I know a couple times that I've been, my professor noticed that I had come and that my skills had improved and they were really happy about that and they gave me um, a couple like extra points on a test or they like commended me for doing so. The number of students that I tutor varies um, depending on the week. I'm here for three hours a week and people can sign up for either a half an hour or an hour slot. I've been to the Learning Center for Chinese tutoring over the past year and I think it, it was a really cool experience because you know they went at my pace um, and it's really good to get another opinion on something other than just the professor. A student that's been through it, kind of teaching you through everything is definitely a better experience than just trying to you know suffer through it yourself. Good evening and welcome to MC Live right here on MC 77. I'm Dan Allen. And I'm JC Seltzer. And we have a fantastic show for you tonight. First up, we have junior dance minor Kate Cutting. She's going to be performing an original dance routine to a Mark Schultz song. Wow. That's a real tearjerker. You're not going to want to miss that. And then, after Kate performs, we will have a few acclamation dancers on our show to answer a few questions about acclamation and to give a sneak preview of the show. We will have more acclamation dancers on the show than we've ever had before, so get ready. It's going to be a great show. Stay tuned. Welcome to GoMessiah.com, the official website of Messiah College Athletics. On the home page, you can find recent stories, a social media directory including general athletics and sports-specific accounts, and the Falcon YouTube stream. Scrolling down, you can view upcoming events with stats, audio, and video links if available, as well as recent results, including box scores and recaps. In those recaps, you can read the story along with view the photo gallery, next game information, team schedule, and roster. Game stats are on the side, and you can even watch the highlight of the night. These highlights are made possible by GoMessiah.tv, where you can view live streams and stats for all home games, regardless of where you are. GoMessiah.com, your home for everything Falcon. Welcome back to MC Live right here on MC77. We are back here with dancer Kate Cutting. Take it away, Kate. To the mailbox on that bright summer's day, found a letter from her son in a war far away. He spoke of the weather and good friends that he'd made. Said, I've been thinking about. Of his 
Goodness, that was gorgeous. Kate, that was fantastic. So that was actually one of my favorite Mark Schultz songs, and I've never seen anything like that. That's incredible. So we're going to go to break. When we come back, we are going to have some members from Acclamation with us. Stay tuned. I have really found a significant amount of faculty interaction, and I felt that at the chemistry department at Messiah, that they have just been really invested in my education, and they've cared about who I am as a person. We have resources available to us that are similar to those that you might find at a bigger research university. And I think that one of the most crucial developmental aspects of my relationship to God as a result of my education is that I'm learning to appraise the difference between um, the scriptural truth that we are taught growing up as Christians and the things that uh, maybe require more critical thinking and learning to uh, learn more about who God is by our study of the natural world and how we can study that and just grow closer to him. The Career and Professional Development Center is designed specifically to help students with a lot of their questions regarding career and vocation. So if you're an incoming student and you're saying, I don't know what I should major in or I've picked a major and I don't know what I should do with that major, we are a great place to come because we offer one-on-one -on -one counseling for students. There are six career coaches in our office that meet every day with lots of appointments to help you with your questions about a career and, and jobs and internships, so we do one-on-one -on -one counseling. If you've never built a resume, we can help you with that and correct that. If you've never done a practice interview, we do those. If you would like to meet with professionals in the field, we help you with that. Into the City is where each semester we take a trip to a major metropolitan area and take students with us. And we go with the sole purpose of helping students experience businesses and places of work in a large urban area. We've been to New York City, Boston, currently we're leaving for Chicago, um, Baltimore, Nashville, Charlotte. So all the major cities we have been trying to get to and we take students with us so that they can find out what it's like to live in the city and work there. I really enjoyed my time going to Nashville because it was a really great opportunity 
to really uh, understand what networking is, just being able to see, wow, you know, from Messiah that I could go and work in some of these big companies and small companies. Don't wait too long to go to the Career Center. They're here every day to want to help you. Um, I know that really benefited me going there first year to be able to talk through my major change, um, what exactly a resume was, things to not say in an interview, um, a lot of different skills that were really beneficial to help me get a leg up even from a first year student. I know sometimes you think, oh I don't need to start thinking about this till sophomore, junior year, but there's a lot of resources that they have that can really help you get a step ahead. Adventure education is defined as the use of adventurous activities as a catalyst for personal and interpersonal growth. It's as much about the education as it is about the adventure. Within our program here, you definitely learn the leadership. And so together, you get the, the complete package of not just the technical skills, but how to utilize and design those uh, adventure experiences to help groups reach their goals. Well, as an adventure ed major, you have to take certain outdoor activities courses. So you have the options of doing rock climbing, you could do canoeing, you can do caving, and learning all these cool activities that you could never do sitting in a classroom. It's definitely what makes this program awesome. We're back on MC77 with acclamation dancers Jenna Malangowski, Emily Falkenstein, and Caroline Cuz, who will soon be joined by a few other acclamation dancers. But first, what kind of dance do you guys do in acclamation? Well, we are members of the Ballet One class. I teach the class. These are a few of my dancers. So today we're going to be dancing ballet. Awesome. So have you guys done ballet before this class, or are you new to ballet? Well, I have not done ballet before coming here and mm -hmm. joining Acclamation, but this is my third semester, I think, working with Jenna and doing ballet in her class. And this is my very first semester dancing. I have no previous dance knowledge, um, but it's been really, really fun to um, learn something new and to worship God through dance. So do you guys do any other dance with Acclamation or just ballet? I do a few of the ensembles as well. I know. Um, I also do tap through acclamation. Mm -hmm. I'm just a ballerina. <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with that. <laughs> How has acclamation impacted you guys? Oh, acclamation has impacted me in a lot of ways. It's hard to even condense them, but it's a really good community of people to dance with and worship with. And I know in our class, we love dancing, obviously, but also laughing together and doing mm -hmm. devotions together and. Yeah, just a lot of really positive things going on. Yeah, it's a great way to meet some really cool people. And we dance, but that's not really our focus. Like, we spend a lot of time just kind of mm -hmm. getting to know each other. And we do devotions together. And it's just really a good place to worship. And I had never connected worship and dance before. So acclamation is really cool that mm -hmm. there's that element. And you get to experience God in different ways you hadn't done before through your body and mm -hmm. your movement, yeah, which is awesome. a really cool opportunity. Mm -hmm. I would echo everything that they said and also just speak as a first year. It was really cool to meet different people that I would never come across because luckily Jenna is a senior and <laughs> she's busy and I would never <laughs> see her. Um, so it's been really cool to meet other people who know things about campus, who can teach me things, teach me things about the Lord. And it's been a fun community. How has the worship component of Acclamation inspired you? Yeah, I mean, we've already touched on it a little bit, but it's just a really great way to connect with the Lord and study together and just incorporate that into your movement and have that be a way that you're worshiping and a way that other people can come into worship with us. It's just really integral to what we do here. Mm -hmm. And when you think about dance, sometimes you think about the individual performer and like how great they're doing but we kind of turn it on its head and say this is how we're giving back to the Lord we're doing this for him this is a way to glorify him through what we are doing and that's just a really interesting perspective that's not so much about what we're doing but who we're doing it for awesome 
All right, ladies. Well, I'm so excited to see you guys. Take it away. A lot of us grew up believing at any moment we could lose it all. And at the drop of a hat, God might turn his back and move on. A lot of us feel like we blew it, thinking that we're just too far gone. But I want you to know. There's still a hope for you now No matter what you've done You can't erase his love Nothing can change it You're not separated No matter what There's never been a better time to get on it never been a better time to get clean so come as you are run to the cross and be free oh be free Thank you for being here with us tonight. That was awesome. Unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for tonight. Thank you again to Kate Cutting and the Acclamation Dance Ministry uh, for joining us tonight. We hope you enjoyed the show. Be sure to tune in next Monday for Falcon Update at 7, or check out our YouTube channel for more campus news and musical performances. Have a great night.
Welcome back to MC77. I'm Molly Sherman giving you this week's campus calendar. First up, still need to do some Christmas shopping? Then come shop unique and fair trade Christmas gifts at the 10,000 Villages Holiday Sale from Tuesday, December 4th to Thursday, December 6th. 10,000 Villages will be set up outside the Falcon from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. all three days. Funds from the holiday sale will benefit the collaboratory. Combo Chimbita is coming to B-Sides this Wednesday. This Colombian band from New York has a distinctly futuristic yet traditional sound with roots in heavy rock, metal, funk, and soul. Catch them in a union at 9 p.m. on Wednesday. This semester's Digital Media Senior Seminar class will present Control, Shift, Return, an interactive gallery on Friday, December 7th at 7.30 p.m. in Fry Lobby. Come explore how we can return back to the world with a sense of wonder and support your friends in the Digital Media Department as well. The SAB Lost Film of the Week is Eighth Grade. Written and directed by Bo Burnham, Eighth Grade follows an introverted teenage girl just trying to survive the last week of her eighth grade year before starting high school. The movie will show on Friday at 6 and 9 p.m. and Saturday at 3, 6, and 9 p.m. Tickets are free for students and faculty and $4 for guests. This Friday and Saturday, come support the students of the Department of Theater and Dance as they showcase their original work in their fall senior series. Two pieces will be featured this weekend. One created and performed by Kelly Hertzler and Amanda Adams, and one created and performed by Becca Roberts. The two pieces will be performed on Friday, December 7th at 8 p.m. and Saturday, December 8th at 3 and 8 p.m. in the Grace Pollock Dance Studio in Climenhaga. Tickets for this event will be $5 for all attendees. Don't forget to assemble your team for the IS Dodgeball Tournament on Saturday at 1 p.m. in Sawyer Gym. This year, instead of the classes facing off, students are free to form their own teams. The cost is $2 per person to play, and all the funds will go to the Cracked Pot Coffee Shop to help with their foster care rehabilitation. Most importantly, the winning team will receive a free t-shirt, so don't miss out. Do you enjoy music and free entertainment? Then come hear the Messiah College Guitar Ensemble, conducted by Randy Zwally, as they perform in their winter concert on Saturday, December 8th. The concert will take place at 1.30 p.m. in the High Center Recital Hall. As mentioned, tickets are free for this event, so why not go and support this Messiah College Ensemble? It's a weekend full of concerts at Messiah. The Messiah College Jazz Combo, directed by Todd Gorenson, will perform at 7.30 p.m. on Saturday, December 8th in the High Center Recital Hall. This concert is also free and open to the public. Also on Saturday, Acclamation Dance Ministry will present their 2018 Winter Worship Concert Inseparable. You have two opportunities to catch the concert. Saturday at 3.30 with doors opening at 3, and Saturday at 7.30, doors opening at 7. The concert will take place at Camp Hill United Methodist Church. Tickets are $5 for individuals age 5 and up and free for children under 5. That's all for this week's campus calendar. Adventure education is defined as the use of adventurous activities as a catalyst for personal and interpersonal growth. It's as much about the education as it is about the adventure. Within our program here, you definitely learn the leadership. And so together, you get the, the complete package of not just the technical skills, but how to utilize and design those uh, adventure experiences to help groups reach their goals. Well, as an adventure ed major, you have to take certain outdoor activities courses. So you have the options of doing rock climbing, you could do canoeing, you can do caving, and learning all these cool activities that you could never do sitting in a classroom. It's definitely what makes this program awesome.